We bought the first ever graphics card with eight gigabytes of memory, and it's the R9 290X, which is one of the most legendary graphics cards from AMD. But can it still play games at 1080p in 2025? Well, you'd think with that amount of frame buffer, it probably can. But to find out for sure, we've tested it. The 8GB R9290X is a pretty significant graphics card because Nvidia went on to copy it for the next 12 years. If you know, you know. Anyways, having 8GB of video memory back then was an absolute flex and to be honest, no gamer really needed it in 2013. Especially as most people had between 2 to 4 gigabytes of VRAM. This is like having a 24 gigabyte plus graphics card in 2025. That's how significant this GPU was. But does this amount of VRAM help it out at 1080p in 2025? Well, to find out the answer to that, we've tested it at, well, 1080p using the latest official AMD driver, which is 22.6.1. So it's almost three years out of date now, but that's the latest one. And we've left the R9290X at its stock out of the box settings. And like always, all testing has been done in our 13700K GPU testing system. And if you wanna check out the rest of the specs, they'll be listed down below. We're going to start off with Red Dead Redemption 2. Admittedly, it's a bit of an older game now, but it still looks absolutely phenomenal. And it's pretty well optimized as from what we've seen today. 49 FPS on average with a 1% low of 42 means the frame time is relatively stable and yeah, it was definitely stable during our benchmark passes. And this is with the medium preset with ultra textures. So you could probably do some settings tweaking and leave those textures on ultra and you've got a very good looking game and a very nice performing one as well. Anyways, I could probably leave it with these settings and just play on a controller. It's more FPS than what you'll be getting on the consoles anyways. Cyberpunk 2077 on the low preset with high textures is an okay performer, I'd like to say. We're getting above 50 FPS on average, which is not too bad to be honest, but the 1% low is around 42, so it's not technically the smoothest frame delivery ever, but it's more than playable if you ask me, and if you absolutely had to play this game, on an R9290X 8GB, you're still going to be having a relatively decent experience, I think. Now this one is the biggest shocker. Your eyes are not deceiving you. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is running on an R9290X, a GPU which predates this game by 12 or so years, I'd like to say. Anyways, the performance is still pretty decent here because on the low preset with high textures, you're getting just over 50 FPS on average, which is very nice. And that 1% low is only trailing it by nine frames per second, meaning it's still an excellently optimized experience. And the next AAA game is The Witcher 3. Here we're getting very good performance at 71 frames per second on the high preset, which is very good to be honest. Yes, the 1% lows are kind of lacking, but this is The Witcher 3. There's a lot of variance in the scene I like to test in, which is sort of a worst case scenario. But to be honest, the R9290X passed with flying colors here. So if you wanted to play The Witcher 3 on this GPU, you won't be having any problems at all. Newer AAA games, and I mean newer, like they're not the newest ones. Anyways, they're a bit of a mixed bag. This is because performance for the most part with all things considered is still pretty decent. You're going to be locked at around 50 FPS at full HD, which to be honest, considering the age of this card is really not that bad. But the cherry on top of the cake is you can still have high or ultra textures because of the eight gigabytes of VRAM, which is going to be a bit of an issue on the four gigabyte card because textures are going to be looking rather muddy on that GPU. But the biggest shocker of this is Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 started, but not only did it do that, it ran pretty decently, admittedly on the low preset, but with high textures. So this is a massive win for this graphics card because I was not expecting this at all. Competitive gaming is an area where naturally older cards like this tend to shine quite often. And in Fortnite on the performance API with the low settings and the high textures, we're getting a very good performance here. 287 on average with 185 for the 1% low, which is pretty decent by Unreal Engine 5 standards. Yeah, I reckon I could have a very competitive gaming experience on this GPU. Admittedly, the 13700K is not holding back this GPU at all. Kansas Strike 2 is more of a CPU benchmark, if anything, but the R9290X can still have a really good time here where you're getting just south of 180 FPS on average. And actually the 1% lows are looking pretty decent by Counter-Strike standards. So 
yeah, there's not any problems here at all. Rainbow Six Siege is a similar story as the average frame rate is absolutely brilliant on the low preset, you're getting north of 200 FPS, which is great. And the 1% low is also pretty smooth, only trailing it by around 25% if that. So yeah, this is pretty decent if you ask me. And if you had a 144Hz 1080p monitor, yeah, you're not going to be having a terrible time here. Let me tell you that. So to no one's surprise, competitive and esports games run absolutely fine on a graphics card like this, to the point where I'd say you're probably set for a 1080p, 144Hz gaming experience. Yes, admittedly, the 13700K is a very powerful CPU, especially compared to the GPU, but the fact of the matter is, a good CPU doesn't magically make your graphics card any faster. It just doesn't hold it back. And after all, we're looking at the performance of the R9 290X 8GB today, not a gaming PC from 2013, 2040. But yeah, when it's not being held back by the CPU, the R9 290X is perfectly fine. And I'd wager the 4GB card is perfectly fine in these games as well. And just to show that older GPUs are absolutely not e-waste, we're testing some older games with GTA 5 here and on the high preset with very high textures, yeah, you're not going to be having any problems at around 80 FPS on average with a 1% low of 62. So the game's running relatively smooth here and the average frame rate is more than enough for what you'd probably need to play this game, especially if you're playing on a controller. And before the time of the R9290X is Halo Reach, admittedly it's on the Master Chief Collection running the enhanced preset so it looks better than what it did on the Xbox 360 and it performs a lot better too with 158 FPS on average and the 1% lows are still hovering above that 100 FPS threshold so performance here across the board is absolutely brilliant on this GPU. Admittedly the 4GB model would probably still get around the same performance so that has to be known. Just like the competitive games, older AAA titles are going to be performing brilliantly fine, brilliantly fine, perfectly fine on an R9290X, especially as they launched around the same time as this graphics card. It's not like older GPUs magically get worse throughout their lifespan. If anything, with AMD, they get slightly better, thanks to AMD's fine wine. Anyways, I suspect the 4GB card would be perfectly fine in these games, but the 8GB card is obviously going to be performing exactly the same as that and if you wanted to install texture packs that's where the extra vram comes especially in handy so is the r9 290x still a valid graphics card probably not and that is because its drivers ran out of support around three years ago now so if you wanted to play newer games like star wars jedi survivor god of war ragnarok and hogwarts legacy which are some games we try to start today they won't run at all like you get an error message and god of war tried running on the integrated graphics and i couldn't switch to this so yeah this is some of the problems you will probably face if you try to use an older graphics card like this which is a bit of a shame because i think the underlying speed of this gpu will at least allow it to play these games at low settings especially with relatively decent texture quality settings however the r9 290x aged much better than the nvidia flagships of the time because it has support for directx 12.0 at a feature level and it's also got another year or two of driver support. So I reckon games like Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 would not start on like a Kepler Titan, for instance. But overall, I think the R9 290X is a very cool graphics card. And I believe this Vapor X is the first one to ever ship with eight gigabytes of VRAM. So yeah, it's kind of a special card. And Sapphire did kind of cook with this design because it's a very nice looking graphics card, especially for its time. But if you want to see how we scored an incredible deal on this RTX 2070 Super, you can watch this video up here. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.